Lori here. I am back today with a top 10 Tuesday. I'm not actually following the next couple of official top 10 Tuesdays just because I have some topics that I want to focus on. But after I do all my BEA themed and summer themed inspired TBRs, I will definitely head back to the ones approved or done by the Artsy Reader Girl because they're actually super fun and they gave me a lot of fun ideas. But since I just got back from a bunch of these conventions and I just found out that I am going to Comic-Con in the fall, I have a much more bookish themed plans, like what I want to read by when. Um, so today I'm going to tell you the top 10 books that I want to read this summer before school starts when hopefully I'll be a full-time teacher. Um, but these are the top 10 books that I did get from BookCon that I'm definitely, I mean, BookCon and Book Expo that I'm going to be reading in a more timely fashion. Doesn't really matter about the release date, but I'm just super excited for them. Um, some of these might actually be early fall because some of them are a little bit creepy, but these are the top 10 books that I did get from both of these conventions. The first book I'm going to chat about is The Last Life of Prince Alistair by Alexandra Bracken. I did get to meet her a couple of times and she was able to sign this. This book does not come out until February, which was a real shock to me because the first one came out in October last year. Um, but this is the sequel. And the first book, if I recall correctly, follows this guy named Prospero Redding. Um, and he finds out that a demon is living inside him because of something that his family did. Um, so he kind of goes on this big adventure to try to rid himself of this demon. And it was a super fun, creepy book. There was twists that Alexander Beck and Paul that I did not see coming. And I was really, really, really enjoyed the first one. Probably reread the first one at some point because um, I really want to be fully caught up for this one. But this book does not come out until February. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited that I got it early and I will definitely be diving. This might be like a September read. But I will definitely reread the met, the first one maybe this summer. But yeah, I was really excited for this. And this cover is so pretty. They did release the official cover, which means I'm probably going to be getting a finished copy when it comes out and having her sign it. But it was really important to me that I got this early. So I'm really excited to dive into this one as well. The next book that I got was not one I was planning on getting, but it was Darkest Legacy by Alexandra Brecken. I am getting a signed copy from Good Choice Readings. And if you go on my blog, I did a preview post for them. Um, and I love their company. They're really good. They do a lot of cool signings, especially if the authors aren't in your area. But I did do a post on my blog about that and all the information about that. So definitely go check that if you want a signed personalized copy of Darkest Legacy. I'm getting my own, but I did get this copy just for my collection. Um, and this is a sequel set after Darkest Minds, and it follows Zoo, the character that you meet in the Darkest Minds. I'm not quite sure what it's about, to be honest, because I don't want to be spoilery. But I do know that it is a mystery, and you know how much I love mysteries. I will definitely be, this will probably be the first book that I read in July, because it does come out at the end of July, and I want to read it and then send my thoughts to Hyperion. But I really am excited to read this. I'm so excited for the Darkest Minds movie, and I really cannot wait to venture back into this world. So, yeah, Darkest Legacy was another one of my top 10 cho choices that I got from BEA. The next book I got was another pick from Disney, and it's Part of the World, A Twisted Tale. And they've, they, I think they have a whole entire series of these, but most of them are R. Way Liz Brashville. I have seen a couple that aren't by her. But this is What If Ariel Had Never Defeated Ursula. And I have, I think, I have the Belle one on my Kindle. I have a physical copy of the Sleeping Beauty one. And when I saw this one, I just had to get it. Ariel and Belle are my two favorite Disney princesses. Um, and I'm really excited for this. This comes out in September. Which means I'm definitely, I would love to read this over the summer because I love like reading aquatic books in the summer, especially with this princess. So I'm definitely going to be diving into this one early and it's a massive. I think this is like close to, close to 460 pages. So it's definitely a massive book, but I definitely want to dive into it and give you guys my thoughts. But yeah, I'm really excited to see this and I definitely snatched it up when I saw it. I never did talk about it, but I did go to a Bloomsbury tour, like, the day of Blogbound in the morning, and I did get a couple, I got an arc from that, and then I went to another event, but at that event, Lizzie Mason is a publicist for Bloomsbury, and she's coming out with her own book in February, and it's called The Art of Losing, and she talked about it there, and I was like, oh my god, I need this book, so this was, like, one of the book signings I did at BookCon, and it's called The Art of Losing by Lizzie Mason, and it's about this girl who, it's summer, she's with her boyfriend, they're at a party, and she walks out of the house and finds that her little sister is making out with her boyfriend. That is, like, the worst thing imaginable I can imagine. Um, but the story gets even worse, because she breaks up with her boyfriend, and she leaves, she, she, she leaves her, her ex there and her 
sister there. And her, sp- her, her ex is driving her sister home and her ex is drunk. And they get into a car accident and her sister goes into a coma. And when her sister wakes up, she has no memory of what transpired. That is probably one of those, and those, that's like, oh my god, I cannot imagine that occurring in my life, so I'm just like, oh my god, but it sounds super emotional, and I love emotional contemporaries, so I'm really excited to dive into this. I heard that there is a boy next door, which, check out my Canterbury Road Co. candle haul, because I got a candle that was perfect for this book coming up, but I'm definitely going to be reading this this summer. It does not come out until January, but I'm definitely not waiting that long. So I really cannot wait to dive into this and give you guys all my thoughts because it will definitely be definitely an emotional winter read, I will say that. <laughs> was definitely a highly anticipated arc at BEA, and it is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is her, I think it's I think I think this may be her first middle grade, but it's basically about this girl who ever since she cast drowned, well, she almost drowned, um, she was she's been able to pull back the veil and she's been able to see ghosts and spirits um but her life you think that's strange her life's about to get a little bit more stranger because her parents land a gig hosting a tv show about the world's most haunted places the family heads off to edinburgh scotland here graveyard secret passageway and ancient castles team with restless phantoms and when Cass meets a girl who shares her gift she realizes just how much she has to learn about the veil on herself and she'll learn she better learn fast The City of Ghosts is more dangerous than she's ever imagined. And that sounds incredible. It's definitely a creepy story. This comes out in August, which means I will probably be reading it in July. So, But I really am excited to dive into this book and give you guys all my thoughts. I know that it's a very highly anticipated read. Possible I might wind up doing a giveaway for this as well, but I'm not totally sure about that. If I like it, I might wind up keeping it. But yeah, I'm really excited to read this one as well. The next book that I got that I was super excited for was from Novel, and it's Grace and Fury by Tracy Bangner, and this comes out in July, actually, so I will definitely be reading this one in July. Um, I am waiting to read this because there's a small chance that it might be in my book box, so I'm waiting to hear if that's true or not. Um, But this is basically um, about a world where women have no rights. Um, Sisters Sierra and Normie have faced two different fates. One's in the palace, the other's in prison. Serera has groomed her whole life to be a grace, someone to stand by the heir of the throne as a shining subject example of the perfect women. But when her headstrong rebellious sister Nomi catches the heir's eye, it's Shino who takes the fall for the dangerous secret that Nomi has been hiding. Now trapped in a life she never wanted, Nomi has only one way to save Serena. Surrender her role as a grace until she can use her permission to release her sister. This is easier said than done. A traitor walks the halls of the palace and deception lurks everywhere. But Serena is running out of time, imprisoned on the volcanic island where she must fight to her death and survive. One wrong move could cost her everything. That sounds incredible. I really love books about sisters, and I love books about strong female characters, and I'm just super excited for this one. I will definitely be reading this in July. So, yeah, definitely keep your nose up for my review and my thoughts. Another royalty-themed book from novel is Rule by Lena Goodet, and this comes out in September. And this follows three girls, and I think they're all, like, the illegitimate daughters of a king, each girl hides a dangerous secret that kind of could get her killed for treason. When the girls are brought before King Andos, expecting an execution, instead they learn the truth. The king is dying, and they are his only living heirs. Now the three of them must live at court and learn what it takes to rule, but someone in Kalana knows the girl's secrets, and they stop at nothing to keep them from the throne. Again, super good. And I also was, like, looking through all my books, and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of doing, like, individual reviews, I think I'm going to group them. Like, I'm probably going to do, like, a thriller haul based on when the books are coming out, like, a contemporary and, like, a fantasy, just so I can give you guys my brief thoughts in, like, a themed video. So let me know in the comments if you guys like that idea. That's what I'm definitely going to think I'm going to be doing, just because I have a lot of books, and they're all kind of themed. Like, I'll do, like, a royalty-themed one. I'll do, like... Um, a thriller one, I'll do a contemporary one, so that's my thoughts, but I'm really excited to dive into this one as well. This was definitely the most highly anticipated book from Epic Reads, and you know that because people were dying for this arc, and the way that they did it at BookCon was you had to get a ticket to get, to do like a Plinko board, so it was all luck of the draw, and everyone was trying to trade for this book, and that was um, what If It's Us by Becky Abertelli and Adam Silvera. I have loved all of Becky's books. I read most of Adam's. I still have one holdout that I have to read this summer. But I'm super excited for this one, and I'm just going to read you guys the back. Um, what if they can't quite nail a first date, even after three do-overs? What if author tries too hard to make it work and Ben doesn't try hard enough? 
what if life isn't like a Broadway play? What if it, what if it is us? What if, what if it is us? What if it isn't us? And I know that this is like, I know that one of the guys, I think it's Ben is like a Broadway nut and I'm like a Broadway nut. So I think that this is so adorable. Cannot wait to dive in. I was able to meet them both and get this book signed. So this book is definitely going to stay in my personal collection, but I'm super excited to see what this book is. And this will definitely be a summer read, hopefully in July. This book was an unexpected find because a friend of mine had two copies and wound up giving me one. And it's The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. I am so excited for Kirsten's White Slayer's book that's coming out next year, but I I met her at BEA. She was like in the Penguin booth and I saw her. And when I found out that I could get a copy, I definitely grabbed it. And it's basically about Elizabeth. Um, and she winds up, I guess she winds up like becoming a caregiver to Victor, Victor Frankenstein. Um, and she, you know, she's in like the lap of luxury, but her new life comes at a price. As the years pass, Elizabeth's survival depends on ma managing Victor's dangerous temper and indulging his every whim. No matter how depraved, behind her blue eyes and sweet smile lies the calculating heart of a girl determined to stay alive, whatever the cost, as she knows, as the world she knows is consumed by darkness. We'll definitely be reading this in July. I have a lot of books reading online because I'm actually donating this to my library for a raffle because my to the teen librarian and I really, really wanted it. So I will definitely be, be, be reading this July and giving you guys my early thoughts on it. It does not come out until September. The next book is one that I actually was super excited for, but I actually did wind up reading it the day of BEA, like the day after BEA, and that's Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. It does come out in September, but it basically follows these two girls, Mia and Brynn, and five years after the fact, their best friend was murdered, and everyone thinks that they killed her. Um, so basically is the aftermath of these five years and what actually happened to Summer, and it's, it's definitely a thriller. There are some possible paranormal elements that I really enjoyed, but I really, really liked it. I gave it four stars. I will have... A thriller review on my channel closer to September, probably, but I really, really like this and I was super excited to get this and I loved it so much that I had to read it in a quick and timely fashion. The next two books are definitely my highly anticipated ones, the ones that I went there for, and that was Wild Card by Mary Lou. This is the sequel to War Cross. I loved War Cross last year and I have a couple of books I have to read for the for the bookish site that I'm working on, but this is going to be one of my next reads because I really need to know what happens. I'm debating if I should reread Warcross or re-listen to Warcross, so that's like a possibility that might wind up happening, but I definitely, definitely want to re read this soon. So this will probably be a this month read. I might actually go get the audiobook for Warcross and listen to that right now, so we'll see. Um, and then the last book that I'm super excited for is The Dark Deep by Ali Conti and Brandon Reich. This is a middle grade take, which is basically inspired by Stranger Things. I actually met them. This is not my copy, but I got met them and they signed it and I was really excited to meet them. But they were describing it at Bloomsbury and I just really, really wanted it. This cover is awesome. I'm a huge Stranger Things fan and I cannot wait to dive into it. So those are my top 10 books that I hope to tackle quickly from BEA and BookCon. Let me know in the comments what book you think I should read first. I do have a pretty long list, but I'm actually super excited to dive into them all. We'll have reviews for you guys and some other fun things. So make sure you guys stay subscribed to all my channels, my blog, my YouTube, and my Instagram. But I'll talk to you guys soon for another video. Bye.